When authorities arrived at the North Texas residence of Seika Actor after a concerning 911 call where she claimed to have killed her kids, they found her two children, Zane and Faryal, unresponsive in the apartment. Seika had indeed done what she told the operator. She had taken a wire and strangled both of her children to death. One of the phrases Seika kept uttering was that she wanted normal children. It was revealed that her six year old son Zane had speech problems and her three-year-old daughter had a developmental delay. Seika herself had been struggling with mental illness for some time, but at that point, it had gone undiagnosed. When a psychologist questioned her about why she killed her children, she said she believed she was saving them and that they were a burden to her. This didn't suddenly happen though. Seika had been researching ways to kill her children for some time. She only resorted to strangling them with a wire after they refused to drink drain cleaner. Her research took place weeks before the murders. Upon her arrest, Seika was visited by a psychologist who after intense evaluation diagnosed her with schizophrenia. Yet it cannot be denied that while on the 911 call, Seika sounded coherent. To her, her children were a burden, and so she got rid of them. People with schizophrenia who commit violent crimes are usually under a schizophrenic delusion believing those they harm to be otherworldly creatures or something evil or in some cases, in danger. Yet Seika never said she believed her children were malevolent, they were simply different. In 2009, Child Protective Services tried to intervene to assist the family after it became clear that Seika was not coping. However, by the next year, Seika's plans were in full effect. When she was asked how she felt about killing her children, she responded with, nothing. After her arrest, she was placed on suicide watch at the Dallas County Jail. Initially, she was charged with capital murder, with the prosecution wanting her to face the full effects of the law. Yet before the court, medical experts testified that Seika suffered from a mental illness that she herself did not understand and that she would be better suited to spending her sentence in a mental hospital rather than in prison. Her attorneys argued that it would take several years of treatment and medication before she could be considered safe to be around the general population. Actor and her husband had moved to the United States from Pakistan. It was after she arrived that she began displaying symptoms of mental illness. While her husband worked as a computer technician, Seika stayed at home with the children. It was agreed by both the prosecution and defense that Seika's family had not done enough to ensure that she received adequate mental health support to prevent such a tragedy from occurring. In the trial, after the medical testimony was presented, District Judge Mike Snipes deemed Seika not guilty by reason of insanity. She was sentenced to remain at a state hospital until a judge ruled in favor of her discharge. Regarding the case, Judge Mike Snipes stated that there was no good solution in this kind of case. It was a tragedy that could have been prevented had there been intervention before July 2010. The ruling caused significant discourse with some parties disagreeing with the sentence implying that Seika's gender had factored into the ruling and that the death penalty should have been sought. Beyond the realm of schizophrenia, the concept of personality disorders, such as narcissistic personality disorder or borderline personality disorder, could offer alternative explanations for Psycho's extreme actions. The desire for normal children and the perception of her own offspring as burdens may point to underlying issues of identity, self-esteem, and emotional regulation that extend beyond the realm of schizophrenia alone. The research conducted by Seika into ways to harm her children before resorting to strangulation raises questions about premeditation and the extent of her mental state at the time. It is possible that her behavior was driven by a combination of factors, including distorted thinking patterns, intense emotional distress, and a lack of adequate support and coping mechanisms. The dynamics within her family, as well as the cultural and societal pressures she may have faced as an immigrant woman, could have exacerbated her struggles and contributed to the tragic outcome. As the dialogue surrounding Seika's case continues, it is essential to consider a multidimensional approach that integrates psychological, cultural, and sociological perspectives. Seika's case follows a narrative similar to that of other killer mothers, all acquitted due to insanity, such as Andrea Yates who drowned her five children in 2001, believing them to be under threat. According to her, killing them was the only way to protect them from Satan. Deanna Laney killed two of her children and injured the other in 2003, believing that God told her to do it. She like Andrea, was found to be suffering from psychotic delusions and was acquitted. 
Ultimately, this case serves as a warning of the importance of intervention and caution when mental illness presents itself. In the case of Seika, not even a mother's love was enough to protect her children from the depths of her disease.